What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Will Ocho. Of course, this is Owen the Sea. Today we're going to be talking about another Tampa Bay Buccaneers re-signing. I know. What else would we talk about? There's so many to go through and go over, but today of course we're going to be talking about Shaquille Barrett. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have re-signed Shaquille Barrett. Shaq Barrett is coming back for what will be his third year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers now in a row. And I must say, I'm surprised. I didn't expect this out of the major three free agents, that being Chris Godwin, Levante David, and Shaq. I really anticipated Shaq Barrett being the one who was the most likely to leave the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I kind of thought that, especially after he made the comments saying that he was interested in breaking the bank, I really felt like there was... It was an unlikely scenario where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would be able to have enough money and enough cap space to fit Shaq Barrett in under the cap and keep him. I'm shocked, to be honest with you. Shaq Barrett, a four-year contract, $72 million, and $36 million of it, of course, is fully guaranteed. Now, when that originally dropped, I was like, wow, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers managed to fit all of that under the cap. Bravo, Jason Light and company in the front office really doing doing their jobs to the highest caliber so far this offseason, last offseason as well, of course. But Shaq Barrett is back, and it's weird. I've been hard on him, hard, hard on him. All of last season, I was really stressing and, and, and just talking about how Shaq Barrett, you know, he has not really lived up to the amount of money that they were paying him last year on the franchise tag. Then, of course, this year, or this offseason rather, starts and he talks about breaking the bank. And I just naturally assumed that there was no way the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were going to break the bank for a guy who, in my mind, underachieved last year. Now, a lot of people get caught up in how the season ended. And, of course, Shaq Barrett, the last two games of the season, was just unstoppable. He looked like one of the most dominant players on the field. He looked like the Shaq Barrett of 2019. The problem is the Shaq Barrett of 2019 really only showed up for those two games to end the season, right? Shaq Barrett with under 10 sacks on the season this year. And let me put that in perspective in case everybody forgot. Last year, in 2019, Shaq Barrett had just a shade, a, a tick under 20 sacks. This year, he winds up with a tick under 10 sacks. So, I don't know what exactly we consider a drop-off or a decline, but I would say if you cut your production in half in the one major statistical category that you are measured by, that's a decline in production. Of course, there are extenuating circumstances, right? There's obviously some things that we could get into and some explanations for this, but the reality is he didn't play as well this year as he did last year. It's just facts. One of the most concerning things coupled with that fact is that Vita Veo was hurt. And he was hurt for most of the regular season. Once Vita Veo got injured, Shaq Barrett and the Buccaneers pass rush as a whole did not look the same. And it really made you appreciate how great Vita Veo is. Vita Veo's absence really proved how valuable he actually is more than any play he ever could have made by being on the field. Shaq Barrett didn't necessarily disappear. I mean, he kind of just like evaporated a little bit. You just kind of lost all of the, the, the cool, just like splash plays that Shaq Barrett was accustomed to making. They kind of just dwindled and faded away. And, you know, I do think that Shaq Barrett is still a good player. I don't want it to get, I don't want to put out the wrong message and, and try to make it seem like Shaq Barrett's not a good player. He's not worthy of coming back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or the Bucks shouldn't have paid him. Throughout the season, I kind of came to the conclusion that yes, Shaq Barrett's a good player, but he's not a great player. Shaq Barrett is a guy who is not, he's not a individual game changer type player, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in not being that guy. That's very tough to be. There's very few people who are great regardless of what is around them. That is tough to come by, right? There's very few players that are truly great. Great is a, is a word that's overused in sports heavily. And you very rarely get a guy who no matter what, regardless of what's around him, he's just going to do his job at a high level and just be great. 
And Shaq Barrett proved this year that he's not really that guy. He's not a great football player. Now, I do think he's a very good football player. And when what happens when you have very good football players is generally when you surround them with other good players and other talented guys, they look like great players. That's what happens. Very good players are elevated by the players that they play with, thus taking them into a level of greatness that they otherwise wouldn't be able to obtain. Shaq Barrett, to me, is a classic example of this. You see 19 and a half sacks last year, you see the dip this year. It's very clear what happened, especially, especially when you fast forward to the playoffs, the NFC Championship game and the Super Bowl in particular, Shaq Barrett looked like a man possessed. I mean, he looked like, like I said earlier, one of the best players on the field. But what changed in those two games? Well, of course, you don't need me to tell you, Vita Vea came back. Vita Vea played those two games. He didn't play the two playoff games prior. Against the Washington football team, no Vita Vea. Against the New Orleans Saints, no Vita Vea. Where was Shaq Barrett against the Washington football team? I couldn't find him. Where was Shaq Barrett against the New Orleans Saints? I got no idea. So to me, you could clearly see the direct correlation. Shaq Barrett is a good player who gets elevated to great player status when he's surrounded by other good players. And it does not mean that the Buccaneers shouldn't have retained him. The Buccaneers have been on amazing, just an amazing run this offseason of just being able to get their guys back and get people to buy into the fact that if you come back to this football team, we're going to get you another chance to go for a ring and we can go back to back. That is exciting. It's awesome. I love the fact that that kind of positivity and that kind of energy is just vibing around the Tampa Bay Buccaneers building. I love the fact that they've got people buying in and thinking that's really a reality and that's what's going to happen. Getting Shaq Barrett back is definitely a huge part of that repeat because if we'd have lost Shaquille Barrett to free agency, that would have been one of the bigger needs that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would have had to have addressed somewhere, either through the draft or through free agency with a different signing. Instead, the Buccaneers can just cross that right off their to-do list and they're pretty good at that position. We don't need to worry about getting getting a starting edge rusher. Of course, rotational edge rushers, you can never have too many, right? You always want to have guys you can filter in and rotate around and just get quality reps from and quality minutes throughout the course of a game. Shaq Barrett secures a need, no doubt. Now, as far as paying $72 million, $36 million guaranteed a four-year deal, the numbers look kind of big and they, they scream like, oh my gosh, that's kind of a lot of money. But then you started to see some of the other guys get signed in this free agent market. And you started to see guys like Bud Dupree, Carl Lawson, Trey Hendrickson. And, and you start to see those guys and, and, you, and you're like, dang, he got what? You got that much? And you start to realize maybe the Buccaneers did not overpay for Shaq Barrett. Maybe that's a fair market value deal considering the situation because I think Shaq Barrett was definitely the best edge rusher on the market. So he should have been paid higher than all of those guys and he was paid higher than those guys. To me, I'm not mad at the contract. I'm more just like I said earlier, surprised. I didn't think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would be able to find a way to make this contract work. I didn't think that they would be able to fit it under the cap. And I especially did not think they'd be able to fit it under the cap with Chris Godwin and Levante David also coming back. Both of those combined with the Shaq Barrett move just makes you feel all warm and cozy as a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan, knowing that the big three are coming back and we don't even need to worry. And that's not even addressing the other free agents that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have managed to retain this offseason because the list is long. It's a borderline of scroll. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are just going bang, 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 right down the line. Shaq Barrett, I mean, I'm excited to see him back, guys. At least we know what we're getting with Shaq Barrett. Is he an individual force multiplier style of player? No, he's not. But he can make plays, and he's a big-time player. He's a playmaker for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and we got him back. He's on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for four more seasons, and that's awesome. So hopefully Shaq Barrett could go out there. I mean, hopefully he could go out there and have some 2019-style Shaq Barrett play in 2021. We will see. It's bold to say you're going to win it back-to-back, -back, but the Buccaneers are taking the right steps thus far. Shaq Barrett coming back four more years with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I'm feeling good about it. Of course, check out my Instagram. I'm giving you daily Bucks updates every single day. I'm firing out videos. I'm firing out content. It's going to be right here on the screen. Just go look. If you don't want to follow it, that's fine. You don't have to give me a follow, but go check it out, guys. It's good quality stuff. Go check it out. That's going to do it for this video. Shaq Barrett's back, guys. Let's 
get a smile on our face. We keep our guy. We found a diamond in the rough and we're keeping him around. Shaquille Barrett stays with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You're 2020 Super Bowl champions.